the body floating down the river with no hands and no head and decide because of the and gunshot wounds to his body and find that because of the fact that he would be difficult to identify and therefore it's costly to identify him and it, if you can't identify him, it's going to be difficult, more difficult and more expensive to catch who did it, that you aren't going to bother trying. And just to rub it in, the Almighty, who I'm told is a friend of mine, provided a body minus its head and its hands a week later, but with stab wounds, not gunshot wounds to its body, scattered all over the country. And lo and behold, the police investigated it and made an arrest. Now, our job as members of the public is to remind the police that they work for us. It is our taxes which pay their wages and it is our best interests which they have to have at heart. We all know, don't we, that the politicians have robbed us blind, don't we? And we all know that the police are standing there with their hands in their pockets. They said nothing to do with us. Parliamentary standards, you know, nothing to do with us. Theft is theft is theft is theft. One of my annual reports said Albert thinks in black and white. He has to learn there are shades of grey. Well, I don't accept that. Shades of grey is when people get away with things. The other thing that they do in policing today uh, when I joined Thames Valley Police from the Metropolitan Police, they said to me, when we go out, if something is happening and there are more of them than there are of us, we let them carry on. That's not what you're playing the police force are, is it? That, you're not paying them for that. You don't want your police force to go out and get killed. You don't want it. I'll guarantee you, nobody in this room wants to go out and see policemen getting killed. But, if a gang of blokes have dragged this lady here into a churchyard and a gang raping her, you expect that police officer to get killed trying to save her if that's what it takes, don't you? You expect it. It's part of the job. It's part and parcel of the job. So you have to make your police force do their job. How do you do that? How do you do it? Well, what you do is you look at the police force and you say, I've, I've, I'm a victim of a crime. I report that crime. And the first thing the police force will say to you today is, we'll give you a crime reference number. And you say, I don't want a crime reference number, I want a crime book number. Because unless there's a crime book number on it, it's not a crime. It doesn't appear in the statistics. So if you've got 100 burglaries in a particular area and they give out three crime book numbers, as far as the statistic is concerned, you've only had three burglaries. The other 97 forget about because nobody's ever going to look at them. When I was policing, if I went to a burglary, I would go and I'd see the victim and do all the necessary with the victim. I would then go and knock on every door on both sides of the street. Did you see anything? If they'd come in through the back garden, I'd walk round the block and I'd go and knock on every door that overlooked the back gardens. I never once went out and did that and did not find somebody who could give me a description of somebody they didn't like the look of. I never did. Today, you report a burglary, you don't even see a policeman. They take it over the phone, for which you are paying. And you might get a crime record number, and you might get a crime book number, and that depends upon how kind they are feeling that particular day. You must insist on getting a crime book number. And if you don't get a crime book number, you find out who's not giving you the crime book number, and you put a report into them for a about them for a neglect of duty. It's easy. That then, in fact, goes to the complaints department. But when you fill in the form, the inspector will say to you, are you prepared to accept a local resolution? The answer is absolutely not on your life. 
Because if you say yes, the policeman will come along and say, I'm sorry you're not happy with what I'm doing, goodbye, and that's the end of the subject. But if in fact you say no, they have to then hold a completely open and above board inquiry into that man's conduct. They should come along and interview you. They don't always, they should, but that in itself is a neglect of duty if they don't. And basically what we do is we actually get into policing in that way and that's what we do. Now, what I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to tell you a few stories about policing, things that I have done as a police officer. And you see what the way policing should be done. I was off duty one day and I had an old lady on my beat. I'd had to go down the police station and sign some paperwork and she was only 100 yards up the road and being an old lady, she didn't eat too well and all the rest of it and she was a bit suicidal so I was a home beat officer at the time so I would actually walk in and see her and have a cup of tea and a chat for two or three times a week with her just to keep her on the straight and level. And I thought, well, I don't know. She don't eat very well. I'll take her up some cod and chips. And I was waiting in the queue in the fish shop and I can hear this tumult come out the road. And being policeman and naturally nosy, I walk out the door. And I looked up the street and there were a dozen punk rockers walking down the road, all with a blip obligatory bottle of Old English and one of them, every time he passed a car, he would take a running kick at it. Now, <coughs> we are policemen all human and I used to park my motorcycle on a motorcycle bicycle park outside my house along with about 40 other people and I would go out in the morning and find somebody who'd play dominoes by knocking them all over and so you'd have to pick them all up until you got to your one. Of course, there's no point in stopping then, so you pick them all up. And then you go back to your one and you find you've had an indicator light knocked off it. Now, it's only eight quid. Not a great deal of money. But it's eight quid every bloody week. And that does build up to a lot of money. So you can understand that I actually quite wanted to feel the collar of somebody committing criminal damage to a motor vehicle. So I've walked up the road, I'm off duty, I've got no radio, I've got no truncheon, I've got no hang... Well, I had a pair of handcuffs in my pocket because I always carried them. And <coughs> I was ever the optimist, you see. And so, <laughs> so I walk up the road and I put the warrant card up in front of this idiot's face and I said to him, can you tell me, I'm a police officer, which of these cars do you own? He said, oh, I don't own any of them. I said, in that case, can you tell me, please, why it is that you've put, kicked the hole in the side of this Alfa Romeo here? Nice, bright red, shiny Alfa Romeo with a beautiful dent in the door panel. And he said, I didn't do it. So I said, that'll do me. I'm arresting you for criminal damage to a motor vehicle. And the other 11 punk rockers, they said, you can't arrest him. If you've got to arrest him, you've got to arrest us all. And I said, even that can be arranged. Now get out of my way and I've got him loosely in an arm lock and I walks him off down the road. And they had a little conference and they ran round in front of me between me and the police station and I was outside the Royal Scott Hotel at King's Cross which is a nice pebble, da pebble dashed wall and this bloke with a beard, he looked a bit like Cat Weasel on one side, the other one side was completely clean shaven, the other side was a very long beard. And he said to me, he said, you're not taking him. I said, get out of my way or I will arrest you. And he said, you're not taking him. And he walked forward and he grabbed the bloke by the shirt and he said, come on, Pat, you're coming with us. Now, Pat, who I had in an arm lock, started to walk away. So I transferred the arm lock and converted it into the full body slam. And I put Pat on the floor. And oh, dearie me, accidentally, completely unintentionally, he hopped his head off the pebble dash wall. You've never seen so much blood on the pavement. He sandpapered the top off his head. And I reached up and grabbed Cat Weasel by the beard, yanked him forward on top of Pat, dropped down on top of Pat with the Cat Weasel with my knee on the middle of his back, put my hand in my raincoat pocket, pulled out the handcuffs like a pair of knuckle dusters and said, right now, which of you bastards is next? And they ran away. So I hit Pat and, hooked Pat and Cat Weasel together and wandered them into the police station. The problem with policing today is policemen are nervous. They won't get out of their car if there's a pub fight. Somebody might hit them. They won't get involved because they might get...